held onto the ball too long. No, he was definitely fouled. Just watch here, David Burke. This one here, he just came in and wrapped his arms around him. And no free given, and then the free given against John Milan. I think the ref has got that one wrong. Well, it's gone against him, it's gone to Galway. It was this one here, he just went in and wrapped the arms around him, definitely fouled. Well, the referee didn't get his whistle to the lips, it seemed, until the drag down, the foul that we saw there. But he did pull him for taking too many steps. Ger Farah, who will take this. Good to see him back in the starting 15 once again for Galway. This is going to drop short, tantalisingly, onto the 20-metre line. Comes back out towards Noel Connors, delivering the hand pass to Kevin Moran. Ready to solo, about to be challenged. In came here Latanian, and that put Pate to the Waterford man's gallop. Line ball, however. A lot of very good individual performances out there this afternoon. It's a very warm afternoon in Semple Stadium. Waterford trying to redeem themselves and in the process get into the All-Ireland semi-final. They'd love another go at Kilkenny. That would be their reward. David O'Sullivan has hit this one away again to a Galway player. Comes back via Andy Smith to David Burke. Burke. Well, he was trying to crisply deliver it in towards one of the inside forwards. Never quite worked out. It's been missed there by Tony O'Gregan. John Milan now pushing it ahead. Shane Welsh has difficulty get caught under his ankles almost. Out came Shane Kavanagh. Back across towards Adrian Cullina on the left half back. Big one forward down towards Regan. Again, it is mopped up by Tony Brown. Back once again it comes, and the passing now is a little wayward. And that's hit out by Shane Kavanagh. Collected by Joe Gantley, blocked down. Here comes Brick Walsh, running into Gantley. He's got his arm around his shoulder. Had to be a free out. Good play by Michael Brick Walsh, giving the example. Just watch this again here. Great block initially. Yeah, that's a few times your players have been blocked down in the game and all of them have been standing when they're striking the ball. You know, when you're coaching even young lads, you're saying, be on the move, take a couple of steps away from the man. And I'm surprised at this level to see players standing up to strike the ball. Here comes Seamus Prendergast, trying to make a bit of an angle for himself. He got enough latitude, but he didn't do what he intended to do. And that's put it over the bar. Hasn't scored so far today playing for Waterford in the championship for the 45th time and he's one of those players who was uh, on the bench for most of the campaign so far I've seen very very little of him but he's in because of injuries to Morris Shannon who's a hamstring injury and Brian O'Sullivan doesn't start because of a shoulder injury Galway of course missing Alan Kearns he's also got hamstring trouble didn't start Joe Canning certainly has Made an angle, but uh, didn't quite deliver it uh, to the spot where he intended. Still 1-6 to 1-6. About seven minutes to go now to half-time. Clinton Hennessy. Huge one, landing into his own half-forward line. Kevin Moran challenging for it. Breaks it back here towards Shane O'Sullivan. Was uh, almost selling a dummy there. And the referee has blown his whistle. Donald Barry anxious to continue the argument. And the referee again having to uh, step in here. And I think he's going to have some words eventually. Well, that's the, that's the yellow card for John Milan. The, the, the rule is that the third man in. Third, fourth, fifth at this stage. All getting involved and a uh, linesman there. Barry Kelly playing the role of the peacemaker be a job for him in the United Nations mind you it's been played in a very good spirit so far it has been but a bit unfair maybe to isolate one player you know after really there wasn't much in any of it um, but John Milan is the one who's going to suffer again the best known maybe of the crew involved well we've already had one yellow card for one number 13 that was Damien Hayes and now I think we're going to see a yellow card for uh, Waterford's 13 maybe, John Milan maybe more significantly probably a throw in now instead of the free in which is going to be a simple time for Parik Mahoney which is a big loss on a tight match like this <clears throat> real massive scramble it'll come out eventually referee says no it won't we're going to throw it in Cahill McAllister from Cork in charge Parik Mahoney there number 12 Kevin Moran for Waterford 
Joe Canning in there as well in the red helmet for Galway. Shane Sullivan hand passing it. Oof. Taken out eventually by Adrian Cullinan. Down into space. Plenty of Watford backs there, but there's a couple of dangerous Galway forwards. None more dangerous than Damian Hayes. And I think the uh, backs recognised that fact. They came across, upended him, and that'll be a free in. Yeah, but there was no danger where he was. Look where he was, right on the end line and on the sideline. And a push to the back by Liam Lawler. Stupid free to give away with no danger at all. Yeah, as you say, he was heading t nearer to the corner flag than, uh, than the goal area. So Damien Hayes has been a much decorated star for Galway over the years. Delighted to have won back or won the captaincy. He'd love nothing more than to lead out Galway at Croke Park. Ideally, of course, in an All-Ireland final. Yeah, John Milan came in, behind, you know, and he was the third man in, so it is a yellow card. Well, that's what happened. That's, that's when the referee gave the yellow card. So at the other end of the field, it's Joe Canning, who's got a goal and two so far. His goal coming from a penalty. And this one from a very, very tight angle. Not quite able to measure it. Stays at 1-6 to 1-6. It's been that way for quite a long time. Yeah, and a feature of the game, Watford haven't been fouling. That's, apart from the penalty, that's the only free that uh, they've got inside their own half of the field, at their forward line. Looking for our first score now in about nine minutes in this match, after a very good start. Always interesting, Joe Canning trying to play it back. Comes back to Ila Tanyan. Tanyan fancying his chances. Well, they don't need to hit uh, hopeful shots from those kind of distances. It's a long way to go in this match. Puck out for Clinton Hennessy. And the 34-year-old knocks it up towards Malumphy this time. He bats it down, but to a Galway man, to Joe Gantley. They try to add to it in there to Irla Tanyan, but instead it is Michael Welch who comes across. Big one up towards Seamus Prendergast. Breaks back towards Adrian Cullinan. Taken by David Burke. Oh, struggling to keep it in field, so it's going to be a line ball to Waterford. And Jerry, you'd have to say after a bright start, you know, the last 10 minutes has got very, very scrappy. Both teams look to be lacking a bit of confidence, uh, in my opinion. Both forward lines in particular looking, making it very, very hard work, um, not really posing any threat. Nobody seemed to do the simple thing, win a, win a ball, nice easy ball, maybe uh, take on a man and hand pass it into, the, into a loose man. Everyone's trying to do their own thing and go for their own scores. Kevin Moran does that, and Kevin Moran is successful. He's got a second point. And now it's 1-7 to 1-6. Kevin Moran again, expertly striking this from a fair distance out. Got sufficient latitude. Well, there are going to be uh, two additional minutes at the end of the opening 35 to be played here, so we've got about another three and a half minutes or thereabouts to go. Who's going to take a lead into the break Shane O'Sullivan up here as far as Owen Kelly trying to link up with John Milan steady comes back here to Tony O'Gregan putting the pressure there on David Burke with that particular pass coming in for it here is Donald Barry needing assistance down went Fergal Moore he's fouled free out Galway trying to lift the intensity levels a little bit Waterford still very much on their coattails and that's all the way down, and that's wastefully hit once more. Not alone are Waterford on their coattails, they're ahead, of course, by 1-7 to 1-6. But so much more was expected of Galway, I think. Yeah, I think so, and maybe people expected Waterford uh, not to turn up after the last day, but they were competitive early on, but really the fizz has gone out of the game, and Galway just, you know, what's been affecting them over the last few years, you know, as the championship goes on, knockout games, they just don't seem to have that confidence to produce the really top-class performance on the big day. Well, it happened here two years ago. They were looking good, but lost at the end. Ger Faraher now, and Ger Faraher strikes it over the bar. Two points for Faraher. And the teams are back level again at 1-7 to 1-7. In the 35th minute, he was 45 metres out from the target when he hit that. Off his left-hand side, a very assured striker. This puck out here. 
putting pressure on Galway's half-backs, but it went off a, a Waterford stick, so it's a line ball to Galway as we're into the two minutes of added time now. And David Collins, who's had a wretched time with injuries over the last number of years, getting a more settled run in the side at this stage, taking this line ball, not the greatest. Malumphy trying to keep it in play, trying to get it on his stick. Everybody appealing for it, and the referee might opt to throw it in. So the stalemate ended here as the referee gets ready to throw it back in. David Burke turning up for action, so too was Ger Farraher. And it comes back as far as David Collins in this first of the two minutes of added time. Comes back out towards Damian Hayes. Trying to steal a march there as Tony Brown slipped. Away he goes. And hitting another audacious shot, really. The angles are so difficult. Surely they've got a a better ploy in, in their heads. Should have been able to cut it back in, you would have thought. It runs on neatly this time, and Shane Welch takes it simply, effectively. Minimum of fuss. Maximum reward. He's got a goal and two. Lovely play. Wonderfully effective hurling by the 28-year-old. Back come Galway again. Liam Lawler going back in there to take this one, keep it away from Ilya Tanyan linking up with Dara Fives the 19 year old cornerback big one up here to John Milan runs into the challenge of Collins and the referee says wasn't shoulder to shoulder it's going to be a free into Waterford in this second minute of added time and there's going to be another opportunity for them to tag on a late point here they can go in two points up at the break They've shown a very good attitude, Waterford, in this match. They probably themselves didn't know what was going to happen here after the mauling that they suffered just two weeks ago in Porky Cueve. Yeah, and Galway really helping them, though, uh, Jerry. I think some of the balls into the forward line, like they're hitting balls wide from 90 yards. Uh, Joe Gantley got some that ball. crazy shooting. Joe, Gant Joe Gantley got that ball and tucked it in over all his forwards' heads into the, in, right into the corner flag. So I don't, you know, it really doesn't seem to be much pattern to Galway's play at all. Boric Mahoney hitting this one. Deadly accurate. Three points from Freeze for Porik Mahoney. The two minutes at a time has now been played. Carl McAllister is ready to call for the ball. Wallerford are the happier. They took an early lead from a penalty, which was struck by Owen Kelly, but put in the net by Shane Welch. He got a goal and two. Off he goes, and the Wallerford fans...